Ladies and gents, welcome to my channel. Tonight we're going to take a look at the Moby D. Uh, this is a... Eh, it's an interesting boat. Um, it's got good and bad to it. It is the largest of the, I would say, medium-sized ships. We start off with small boats like the Borga and the Yazi. Or Yazi, or whatever. And then we move to our boats that are kind of like fishing boats. And those are the you know, Shark and Sharky, Selfie... All those boats. Uh, and then we move into the bigger class, which is like the paragraph boats, the the Vabiki and the uh, Star Set. And rounding that set of boats out was the third boat. This is part of the lining. <laughs> I can never say this right. The Line and Net Ships DLC. Um, this is the biggest of the paragraph size boats, though this is not a paragraph boat. It is a regular boat. Uh, this is the Moby D, and it's got the reason why it's a little bit bigger and a little bit better, but then not so great, is that um, it does have more capacity than the other two, um, and it has the largest, the larger crew size. It's the, got the same size crew as the Vibiki, so it kind of beats the Snarset out there. The downsides, it is uber expensive. Um, another big issue with the Moby Dick is that it is super slow. Uh, when you're empty, you can cruise at 12 knots. When you're full, you cruise at about 4 knots. This is going to drive a lot of fishermen crazy. Um, another semi-large issue, it gets terrible fuel economy. Um, not as bad as some of the small boats, but uh, it's not great. You're going to end up having to refuel every time you go into port. If you forget to refuel, you're going to end up running out of fuel. So make sure you refuel every time you go into port or you're going to end up getting stuck somewhere out in the ocean and having to get towed back in. Um, so uh, <coughs> let's go ahead and uh, trick this boat out, if we will. Um, take a look at the dock. And we're going to take a look at the boat in the harbor. And the last boat, once again, the next two boats are the Lunar Bow and the Hermes. Um, and so we have the Moby D. And she runs at 3.35 million krona. Compare that to 2.85 on the Snar set, which is a less... Hold on. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, the Snar set is less capable, smaller capacity, less crew. More lines. 20 hooks. You don't need that many lines, though, but you could do it. Uh, we also have in this category the Vibiki Catherine, uh, which is even less expensive. Uh, so I would say the Vibiki is probably going to be the, the best of the group. But Moby Dick is available, and Moby Dick is larger. He also holds 20, t uh, 20 hooks, 20 10,000 hook lines, same as the Snar set. Senior license required, five-man crew. Engine that just isn't powerful enough. Uh, 60 foot. It's a big boat, though. This is... Now, this boat, because it's older, it also gets around those new the laws. But So it doesn't have to be a paragraph boat. This is the longest of the these size boats. So The other ones are under 50 feet. This one is a 66-footer. Let's go ahead and activate this boat, and we'll go ahead and do some upgrades. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get all the storage upgrades. So once again, 50,000. Wait a minute. I'm incorrect about that. This boat actually will hold it's, it's 100,000. So it is over double the size of the Vibiki and the Snar set, if that's correct, because that it always doubles the amount that you have. You start with fifty thousand, you're upgrading to a hundred thousand kilograms. So uh, sorry about that, but this boat is actually much larger, which explains something. Remember, remember do you guys remember in the Snar set video where I said I, I'm surprised it only brought in one million krona? That's because I was comparing it to the Moby Dick, which I thought they were within 10,000 kilograms of each other, but they're not. The Moby Dick over doubles it, which is why the Moby Dick can bring in $2 million per fishing trip. And so that does make this one a little bit more valuable because you're going to pay it off, you know, two or three trips and this boat's going to be paid off. Um, yeah, already messing up the reviews again. All right, so once again, we're doing all the upgrades. We're going to do Gutting Machine 2. We're going to do Fishing Quota 3. Or I'm sorry, no, we're not. No, no, we're not doing Fishing Quota. Uh, we're going to do the 
we do the line hauler because we only have to throw three lines. Well, unfortunately, you have to throw the long lines, but freezer two. And stacking two. Yep. And whatever, the searchlight, we can upgrade that, sure. We'll do the best upgrade. Boom. So this boat's expensive. A grand total of about 8,000, eight, I'm sorry, 800,000 krona. I'm sorry, no, that's not right. 8 million krona. So let me say that again. That's 8 million krona. So, anyway. Let's go ahead and hop on out to see. Let's take a look at our crew first, though, before we do that. We need to get lines, and we also need to get our crew settled. So, who's on board? We've got Tor. He's terrible, but he's got some strength. George, Roar, Karen, and Rudy. And crew house? Who's in crew house? These guys are both... Yeah, but look at his energy, so nah. We'll deal with him later. Um, so on board, these are the guys that we want. And we're going to go ahead and head over to the... Whoops, I pressed the wrong button. The market. Buy long lines. Two, three, four. So you're going to put out four long lines with the Moby Dick. That's all you need. That's going to fill the boat up. If you put out... You could get eight and then put four out, grab the four, put four more out, and then come back to port and drop the fish off, and then go back out and kind of rotate that way so you can carry eight long lines. I'm just going to get four for the tutorial, though. And we're going to do, or for the review. All right, so... There she blows. So we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and go fishing. And I'll take you on the tour of the Moby. And I'll take you on, uh, we'll go fish. Now, the Moby Dick takes a long time to lay its lines, just like any of the other ships. So when you're done with that first set of lines, it's going to be about seven hours in, or the first... If you get all four lines laid, it's going to take about seven hours to do it. It only takes about, you know, seven or eight minutes on the computer, but it's, you know, in uh, game time, it's about seven hours, so. Turn our searchlight on, and what a cool-looking boat. I do like the way the Moby Dick looks. Um, now... Unfortunately, once again, it gets really slow when you have a lot of fish on board, but if you can handle that and the bad fuel mileage, um, it's a pretty cool ship. So let's go ahead and take a walk around. We have the inside, which is, of course, vintage vintage fishing. We have our lights, horn, the radar, um, compass, searchlight rotation, logbook, gutting knife, and let's walk around the cabin here. So we've got a little area. This goes to the work deck. This goes outside to the top deck. I like this top deck. I like the fact that we can, like, it's got this, like, walk around here. And Once again, this game is excellent at making you feel like you're on a boat. I think they did a great job here. Can't go down there. That's, like, the freezing area or the crew area. Yeah. Now we'll go down to the work deck. Here's our... Pick. You can do all this manually, too, if you want. You can still run the boat as a one-man crew, but you won't be able to freeze or stack anything, so you won't make as much money. And that goes right back up to the wheelhouse. I don't know that you can see the crew cabins on this one or the engine room. Seems like the Line and Ships DLC, they kind of didn't do... Like, all the in-game ones have the ability to go into the cabins and see all that, and then, <laughs> then the ones that are, like that you pay for on the DLC separate, they don't give you all those extra options. I don't, maybe because nobody cared. I don't, I don't know. But it is a little surprising that they haven't included that in either, you know, the same, the same thing goes for the, the crabbing DLC. You can't, there's very little things to explore on the, uh, the Svalbard, so. Uh. So let's get in there and all right so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the map and see where all of our species are at wow not good fishing anywhere except for north 
And then there's some real good fishing here. So let's go ahead and uh, plot a trip up north. I'm going to go here, and then we're going to go in like, eh, you know what, here. I'm going to try to lay all four lines here, but we could set, set some here too. So that'll put us facing close to the right direction, maybe. Nope. Eh, whatever. That works. Here's the, watch the fuel. Here's where it hurts. Fuel's burning down. Yeah, there it goes. So by the time we try to get back into port, we've got to make sure we get gas when we get into port or we will run out. Or diesel. Sorry, if you're a boater, it's probably diesel. Maybe. I don't know. Do Yeah, they, the boat this size probably has diesel engines, right? So, so I'm going to go to... We're going to pretend like we're going to do these lines. That I'm actually going to go to a boat where I've actually laid the lines already because this takes so long to do. It takes me like 20 minutes of off video time to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and, and drop the line. We'll start it. And then we might be in a different location, but we'll just pretend. So there goes that. So throw out what I said about the, in the Snarsnet video about picking the right bait. It wasn't anything to do with the bait or the fish that I caught. You can keep doing that kind of stuff. Um, but the problem was that I picked... Um, a smaller boat. So the reason why this one brings in 2 million is because it's twice as large. All right, so keep that in mind. I'm going to go uh, notate the Snarset video, and then I will be back. So we're going to, in no time at all, you're going to see me getting out there to, to pick up the lines that I've put out, and we'll get our catch and then see how much we do. But this is, once again, a, a good boat. All right, see you guys in a minute. So we'll just pretend like everything is the same. There's the... Yeah, it's the Moby D. Moby Dick. I made it all caps because I like to say the word Moby. All right, so let's get out of here. We're going to go fishing. I know we don't have any lines. We have our lines out in the ocean. They're there. This one should be at uh, 12 hours, right? By the time I get out there, 16, about four-hour trip, I think. Yeah, we're just going to head back. <laughs> I could do laps if worse comes to worse. Now, there's no side thrusters on the Moby D, so we have to kind of work our way out of the dock because I'm crooked. I'm going to take my boat. Show Moby Dick heads out to kill some fish. Let's go do a catch. We got everybody on board. They're all ready to go. Food is cooked for our entire crew. I'll show you how to manage the ship, and we will get out there and make some money. Arg, four lines, full boat. Happy captain. Here we go. So let's go with the map. We're going to do our little fast travel. We're going to shoot right up to one. I'm actually going to come in right about here. Nope. Move it. Move it. I want to move. There we go. Okay. Get a little closer. Clo oh, my God. Oh, forget it. Just go. <laughs> Jeepers. Jumping Jehoshaphat. All right. Boom. So we're still away early. I'm at 15 hours. We'll do a little dance on the catwalk. <laughs> dee 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 dee. Oh well, again, you'll keep going. This is gonna burn up fuel, though. Don't forget, don't forget, fast traveling takes fifty percent additional fuel. So, but it's a good way to kill time. Cause I wish they would change the game so that you can um, you could kill time by staying where you're at, like, and then just press the button and skip time. That would make life so much easier in this game. I don't know why they didn't program that in to begin with, but they didn't. So now we are at 1832. By the time I get into position, we will be clear to pull that line. You can see the line's over there to the left. So once again, this boat's going to cost you about 8 million krona, 8 to 9 million krona, all decked out if you have the money. But it is worth it because it's going to, you're going to make about two million a, a, a trip, so you're going to pay this boat off in about four or five trips. <laughs> Seems to be how it is with most of the boats. Most of them get paid off in about four or five trips. So that's the 
kind of the way the developer has done it. I'm going to slow down a little bit and just kind of coast over there. Oh, they went blue, so Karen's up. She's our best fish killer. You could also do this yourself if you wanted to, like we did on the Snar set. You, don't, you can have four crew on here. You can even have five crew still, but if you want to sit back and be captain and just tell people what to do, then this is the way to do it. Karen, get out there. And also, we're going to put... Oh, how did I get... Oh, that's Aaron, Einar. He's going to repair the boat, because the boat's probably a little bit damaged, and then we'll move him into gutting once the gutting is required. So we're going to slow it down. So I'm predicting a full boat at 1.8 million krona. That's about the typical haul that I've had with this boat. I've done three or four hauls already in the boat. And it hasn't paid for itself yet, but it's coming close. So so Karen's out there. Hey, John, what's up, kid? Dad. Yeah. Can you, uh... Did you leave the bathroom rod running? <laughs> Before you start talking... All right, come here. Can you use uh, somebody of your crew as bait? Can I use what? Somebody, of, uh, add somebody from your crew for bait. Can you use somebody from your crew for bait? I suppose if they double cross ya. <laughs> it's horrible, John. Uh, you sleep with the fishes. What? You can't, unfortunately. There's no way to, to bait your crew. <laughs> oh, John. Yeah, this is not Grand Theft Boat, honey. This is <laughs> Fishing Baron Sea. It's a simulator, not a shooter. You could use people as bait. That sounds awfully violent, John. Use people as chop suey. Moving right along. Next question. It eats them. Good job, Karen. Look at all these fish. She's doing good. She's got... Where, what? Yeah. Now you are, yep. You're ungrounded, yes. No, you're ungrounded. And we're going to wait because this one's not ready yet. 17 hours, 25 minutes, so we still got an hour to wait on that one. Um, I'll just wait. Ta-da! 34,000 kilograms of cod. 3,000 haddock, 3,000 pollock, and redfish. Would you like to cut the fish? No, not yet. Alright, Karen, you go ahead and rest. We've got an hour to wait until the... the next group is ready. Where did she go in? Is she going there? Oh, I wonder if I can get in there. I don't think so, but... Well, that's, what up, John? Possibility of you saw a career of a, uh, uh, I mean, uh, saw them to stream Breath of the Wild tonight. Oh, Breath of the Wild. I tried that already and nobody watched it, John, so probably not. Really? We only caught 7,000 kilograms? That's. That seems lame. Seems terrible. Well, we might not fill the boat up this time. We should be catching about 15, so that's not good. But the fishing is getting a little trip thin, too, as we get into November. So maybe we needed to put five lines out. I don't know. That was what I would consider a very bad catch. Uh, I might have to... Let's see. 7,000. Wow. That sucks. Well, he might as well chop him up, right? So we'll put... This guy's good. This guy's good. And we'll put these two guys on freezing. It's going to go fast, but that's all that. Man, that was a terrible catch. That was really bad. I'm disappointed, guys. I'm hurt. Deeply. Uh, like I said, usually four lines easily fills this boat up and more. So I don't know. This is not looking promising, but... We'll see. All right, we'll be back in a minute. 
I'll gather the rest of these lines and we'll see what the final tally is. Oh, but you can see the crew anyway. I put the first set of guys on gutting, the second size on se second set of guys on freezing. And then as we wait for the next lines, we'll move them over to stacking and they'll get those stacked. So should happen pretty quick since there's not very many fish. I'll be back. All right, so these two Tweedledees and Tweedledums, Rudy and George, Gorg, Jorg, they are done gutting. So I'm going to now move them over to the stacking side. And while these guys freeze, they're going to stack the frozen fish. So they're going to get all that done. And pretty soon Karen's going to get back on there and start hauling in fish. And we'll move them back to gutting. The one thing I've learned is you can't really put the crew out of order, even if you by mistakenly stack. You can always freeze after you stack. Or, I think... Gosh, even if you freeze by mistake, I think you can still gut them. I, you know, it's weird how it works. It doesn't... It's not a science. Uh, you can always do everything to the fish. So you don't have to worry about doing it out of order. I don't think. But maybe if you freeze them when they're not gutted, then you, you're stuck. I don't know. I don't know. But maybe you can't freeze ungutted fish. We'll see. All right, the line's gone blue. I'm going to put Karen back up, and we repeat the process. You can see the guy's got the first uh, the first set uh, all already, so she should just pull that in naturally. I need to move closer, I guess. thought she was close enough, but she's not. So we're going to scoot up, and there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process and get the fish all collected and frozen and stacked and all that good stuff. So we'll see you guys once that's done, and we'll head back into port. I gotta say, lately Karen's not been doing such a good job catching the fish. I might take over and do it myself uh, on the next two lines to kind of catch up. We've got a, we can increase those those by fifty percent if I do it myself. So I might angrily take the fish whacker away from Karen and do it myself because she is not she's not there. She goes perfect now, but she's just been like getting maybe a twenty percent bonus, and I can pull a fifty or sixty percent bonus. Well, now she's at 28, so that's not so bad. Man, Karen, what happened? You used to be so good, 31. It's still not great. Um, wow, even less fish, but Pollock. Uh, wow. It may. I wonder if it's the no exit. I wonder if it's the season that we're in. Um, now that it's into November, this is the worst I've ever had. Like this is terrible. I'm gonna have to throw the. I'm gonna have to set lines out again. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, well, what can you do? I'm for you guys. I'm gonna fill the boat up. So we're gonna have to throw another set of lines out and try to find fishing. I will say that the map. If you look at the map, uh, it has been not the greatest. The spots are there, but they're not the size that they. You know, before they were like this size. So I wonder if it. Cl during the winter, things kind of, you know, thin out. Might even get some shorter lines and try to throw those out and, you know, kind of fish those heavier spots with short lines. Do like, do like, uh, like eight, 5,000 lines. I don't know. It's just, it's, uh, it's not been good. We've, that's a, that's a really bad catch. That's just bad. So. What can you do? Put these guys back out to work. I think I'm going to do hand do the last two myself and uh, see if we can't pull those numbers up. But I think at this point we have not pulled nearly enough fish. And we are just uh, wasting time, you know. So I'm going to get some shorter lines and we'll go that route. So it's fun to be flexible. That's the one nice thing about this boat is that it can carry up to 20 different lines. So you can do short lines if you want. Or longer lines, you can kind of mix and match them so you don't have to do like the full length. If you have small pockets of fish, you can just scatter those all over the place. So uh, the downside is when I go into port, it is going to sell off all of the fish that are in here. So that kind of stinks. But uh, anyway, we do know that this boat's going to bring in 2 million krona when it's all said and done. So I'm not going to pull this line yet. What a disappointment. This has been a pretty rough fish. You know, maybe that's how winter goes, but just a little sad. Back it up. Yo, big girl. <laughs> Sorry. Back it up. 
okay. We're just gonna... Snuggle up against that buoy and hold still while we uh, wait for the line to go blue. So I'll be back. Okay, something happened. And this is going to make things a lot harder. I have reached my yearly quota for COD. Now, this is what I was afraid of. And so I've told you to buy a new boat. But the boat is not the quota. The quota is you. So I am no longer allowed to catch COD. I've reached my yearly quota for COD personally. So it doesn't matter if I switch to a different boat or pay for a COD upgrade. Or maybe that, that the reason why those quota upgrades are so expensive is because it covers all boats. So that changes things a little bit in the way that I was thinking. My thought was just buy another boat, but you can't do that. You're still going to... I've reached my quota for the year on COD. And that is not just on this ship. If we take a look, hang on, let's see what it shows for the boat. Uh, fish quotas. Well, maybe it is. You know, oh, you know, maybe it is for this boat. I'm interested to try that. At the end of the video, we're going to go grab another boat, and we're going to see if I can, if, if my quota is listed as full. So we'll do that. But um, let's uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to get the rest of these lines in. I got one more line to do, and I'll, you guys can hang out for that. Um, that's uh, that's a little frustrating. These guys are just sitting out. And get them going. So this ship has reached its COD quota. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever had that happen. And that is also going to change how many fish that we catch. So anyway, just trust me. When you have your co when you have a full quota available on the boat, you're going to catch about 2 million krona worth of fish. Uh, I will not be able to show that tonight because we're just not... I'm, it's going to take me like a year to catch all the fish now that I can't catch COD anymore. Oh, I missed it. Wow, the wave rolled me right past. Uh, but yeah, so if you um, if you go over your quota on COD, that's it. There's no more COD to be had. <laughs> so I'm not going to ever... But and if you have... This is not filled up all the way. You will get about 2 million per load, but that's it. I mean, there's a limit. So this boat, if you're going to do a lot of fishing with it, you might want to consider getting the upgrades for the cod um, once again at the end of the video we'll test that out and see what happens if i if the quota goes with the ship or the quota goes with the person because from what i'm reading in the the notes of the game the quota goes with the fishermen not with the boat but the way that the game has been acting the way they show you these uh, readouts is that the quota goes with the ship so let's find out at the end of the video but i'm going to go ahead and grab this last line and uh and pull that in and then actually we'll you know it doesn't really matter actually because I can't get a full load anyway, so what you would do in this case is you would make sure you bait for everything but cod. Since we've reached our cod quota, we'd start baiting for haddock and pollock and redfish. So don't you wouldn't use mackerel, because mackerel pulls in the most cod. I believe you'd use like krill or um, another kind of fish. Uh, uh, king crab maybe to lure the fish in. So you want to catch everything but cod, uh, and it's going to take you a lot longer because once again, cod weighs a lot. You, ca you catch a lot of cod. so. That's it for the Moby Dick. Uh, once again, I feel like uh, this is probably, if you're going to spend money, I still think the Vabiki is easier to use. Um, it is uh, more, or less tedious to use because it's a faster boat. Uh, though it is, you know, it tops out at 8. This one, when you're full, it tops out at about 4. So the Vabiki runs longer. The nice things about the Vabiki over the Moby Dick is that um, it's got a larger gas tank, faster top speed, same crew, uh, but it's just, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't have the capacity. The, Mo the Moby Dick in this class is the largest boat. I mean, it really ha it holds 100,000 kilos, where the other two boats, the, the Vabiki and the Snarset, only hold 40. So it's over double the size. So you can really pull in a lot of fish with Moby Dick and, and pay it off fast. But it's a little tedious to use. So the choice is up to you. Um, let's go ahead and take a, one more little ship out and see if our quota is the same. So I'll be right back. Now, the one secret with the Moby Dick that I should tell you is that it does travel to 11.5 knots in fast travel. So you burn a lot more fuel, but you can 
at least get your fully loaded boat home fairly quickly because it does it will travel at that speed even when you're fully loaded uh, as long as you're upgraded all the way I think full fully loaded uh, without the engine upgrades it's slow, a lot slower so anyway, there is that and you can see here I'm gonna run out of fuel because I didn't refuel like I told you you got to refuel or you will run out of fuel hopefully I make it back all right so here we have the jargon and you can see here uh, same date actually it's later November 15th and I am able to catch a bunch of cod so uh, it is the boat not the person so as long as you have boats so you can't my my theory was correct you can keep buying boats if you run out of quota instead of spending 1.6 million on a quota 60% increase you can just buy another boat which is kind of silly but that's the first time I've actually hit a full quota though so that was pretty cool uh, yeah, so the Moby Dick, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's definitely, um, you have to want to play a slow boat. <laughs> that's that's all I can tell you. If you don't like running slow ships, then it's probably not the boat for you. Um, but I do love it, and I think it's, it's a cool boat, and I'm glad I got it. I just, it's, you know, I don't know, it's it's going to be a little bit of a, uh, a challenge to run. And also, maybe... Since we f filled the cod up so quick and didn't fill up the other types, you might want to like always bait for other kinds of fish because you will always catch cod. So I would say try to bait for haddock, pollock, and redfish, and then it'll slowly fill these quotas up evenly instead of just blocking off the fish altogether. Because now you're going to set bait out and you're going to th have to throw back every cod you catch. So you you want to make sure you pick a, a type of bait that is low on cod. Uh, the redfish. They take, it takes a long time to catch a lot of redfish, so you can actually bait for redfish and probably still not fill that quota up first because <laughs> you don't catch a lot of redfish. It takes a long time to get them. So anyway, a little tip there, sort of, kind of. But uh, next up, we'll be looking at the Lunar Bow and the Hermes. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time on the high seas. I learned a lot this video. So have a great night. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up, boys. Help. Bye.